A few days ago, I posted a couple of videos and in one of those videos, I received a comment which really resonated with me and that's to do with survivor's guilt. And it is something that I experience a lot and I'm experiencing it right now as we speak because last night after the election results were announced, I received a couple of messages and I was looking at the WhatsApp statuses from some of my relatives and my friends and family members who are in Zimbabwe. And going through the messages, I could see that most of them were shattered because to them, nothing has changed. They were hoping for something different to happen because for them, change means hope. Reading and hearing those sentiments doesn't bring joy to me because I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I'm in the United Kingdom where perhaps things seem much better compared to someone who is in Zimbabwe. And yes, things, there are things that are much better. I cannot dispute that. But the one thing that I want to talk about, as I already mentioned, is survivor's guilt. And just to put things into context, I lost my father and I lost my stepmom a few years ago. And in both of those situations, the circumstances were such that even though I had money to contribute towards medications and stuff like that, there was really nothing I could do. There was really nothing I could do to change the outcome despite sending the money. And that feeling is hard for someone like me who lives in the diaspora because you look at your fellow Zimbabweans, the relatives and friends that you left behind and how much they are struggling and how much they are crying every day about the situation and you're sitting here you've got wi-fi you've got electricity you can put food on the table by the way things are tough over here make no mistake but that's another video today i'm talking about survivor's guilt and how people in the diaspora or living abroad are consumed by it every single day because of what they see happening through the news because of what their relatives tell them about the situation back home it's hard because you're comparing yourself, you're comparing the situation you're experiencing over here and the situation back home and you're thinking, okay, I'm much better off. I'm in a much better position. At least I can put food on the table. At least I've got access to healthcare. At least I can find a job. It may not be the job that I really want, but at least you've got that option of going out there to find a job, to look for a job. As long as you've got your papers in order, you can find a job. So, that's the survivor's guilt that I'm talking about. You feel bad and sometimes you feel hopeless and helpless because also don't forget things here are also difficult. It's not that if you're living abroad, you have money in the bank. We don't have money in the bank. But as I said, at least you've got food. You've got some kind of access. And when you have to say to your relatives, I'm sorry, I can't afford to send you money. It makes you feel terrible because how are you going to explain that to someone who doesn't have anything? knowing that perhaps today they've only managed to have one meal, if any at all. So it is that situation that makes it hard for people who live abroad. But what I want to say is, for those like myself who live overseas, I just want to say that you don't have to blame yourself for this. You didn't do anything wrong. I mean, we didn't do anything to cause this. Yes, as citizens, we've got a part to play. And that's the second thing I want to say. The most important thing is do your part. Do whatever you can to help out if you can, even if it means helping out in the form of words of encouragement, then that's all you can do. If that's all you can do, then do that. If you're able to send money, then do that. Just do what you can within your means to help out because that's all you can do really. You're not in control of the situation. It's hard. It's hard to talk about because we're talking about real issues here. So really it's about reframing your mind instead of focusing on things that you can't control. Focus on those things that you can control. And as I say, just do your part. The little that you can. Do what you can with what you have wherever you are. And my last advice for those people like me who feel guilty about the situation is that at the end of the day, you must prioritize your well-being. Remember, you can't control everything. You must prioritize your well-being. Because if you are to help those people back home, then you need to be healthy, happy and whole.